these two records will join with these two records. So the optimizer will tell, okay, duplicate the table T2 across the arms and then perform the join. This is one, one of the scenarios. Spool, is, spool means duplication? No, no, spool is like a temporary storage space. Oh, okay. Temporary space. Spool. Once the request is performed, once you get the desired result, right, it will say, okay, delete. At the end of the, after the result has been sent to the client, delete it. So this is how the this is one of the join. There is a other cases as well, but this is a general simple scenario I can explain. Now, uh, some of the again uh, same. Yeah. So basically, it's a traditional join like SQL, but uh, it's keeping uh, the same table in the memory and it's retrieving fast. Yeah, basically data distribution. Okay. And uh, yeah, basically parallel processing is uh, one of the powerful feature of Teradata. And then apart from that, uh, it's a single data store. We store the data in a single data store and can be accessed by two, di two, two different kind of clients. One is a network attached and the other is a channel attached client. Network attached client is the OS related to the Windows, Unix, Solaris, MPRAS, other stuff. Channel attached is the mainframe client. So two different clients we can access a uh, data server. One is a network attached and the other is a channel attached, the main frame. And then uh, it can automatically recover from some of the software failures. It has that uh, capability. And uh, at the same time, uh, Teradata provides data integrity as well. Like it, it is similar to any other database. Like when any, any transaction happens in a system, right? The transaction should be either complete or rolled back. The same thing applies even in credit and environment. So either any transaction happens, right? It takes care that the transaction happens completely or it gets rolled back to a previous safe state. And uh, scalable growth, as I said, like uh, if uh, the number of nodes in the system are being increased, right? Then the performance of the uh, system will be linearly scalable. And then uh, STL, yeah, this serves as a standard access language, structured query language, which is used to access the data. So, yeah, this is how we have in, in this in this diagram we have random numbers. What are those? One second. The architecture. Yeah, which one? And the disk you have 218, 54. No, no, uh, these are the uh, records actually. No, records no, no. Which in the disk, disk, disk diagram. Here, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what, now suppose I want to insert some 12 records into a table, right? This is a sample snippet showing that, okay, this is how the distribution has happened. Oh. A record which a value to a single column, assume a single column record has been sent to AMPHON. A record with a value 18 has been sent to AMPHON. A record with a value 80 has been sent to AMPHON in that fashion. Based on what they are sending into that particular AMP, that particular record is going to that particular AMP. Is there any logic? Uh, basically, it's like uh, uh, the, the parsing engine has one uh, component called hashing algorithm. Okay. okay. And the hashing algorithm will decide to which arm it uh, needs to send. And the hashing algorithm has been, it's a patented one for Teradata. And they have designed in such a fashion that it can accept multiple data type values. And at the same time, 
can produce the uh, different hash values so that the distribution of the data can be in an even fashion. Hash means is that binary coding or yeah, internal algorithm we are not aware of it. What exactly? It's because it's a black box, but it's a mathematical function. Yeah, it's set off. Uh, like zero ones, uh, the binary coding. Maybe. I'm not yeah. sure. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, it's a mathematical function basically. Okay, where the primary indexes uh, come into picture here? Like uh, when I create a table, right now, suppose in this example which I showed you. Now assume uh, the uh, for this particular table, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, employment number is the PI. Assume employment number is the PI. So, the value of the PI will be sent to the hashing algorithm and then the decision happens to which um, the data needs to go. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, we assume that the data is more unique in nature, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the data is non-unique, then there is a chance that the skewness might occur. That means, all the similar records will go to similar RAM. Suppose in the same case, uh, if I take uh, employment middle name as a primary index and uh, I have a table with 1 million records and out of 1 million, uh, 0.9 million doesn't have any middle name. It is a null value. So what will happen in that case? All those records with null value in the middle name will go to 1 amp. Okay. Because similar value, same app. Mm -hmm. So we assume that the data is uh, more unique in nature and based on that the distribution will be in an even fashion. That's it for three, and then uh, so basically, uh, what topics we'll be covering is in initially we'll cover the uh, architectural concepts like a little bit more detail in the server and the client components like parsing engine and the sub modules it contains, how does the request processing happens, those things, and what are the and then a little, little bit on the configuration side. What all, uh, how many number of nodes, how many number of apps, P's, and then we come to the data storage part, how any discrete internally the data gets stored, a little bit on hashing algorithm and the other parameters related to that, and then the technical concepts related to the data, the indexes part, the partitioning, primary indexes part, compression, then the DDL, DML, DCL, and the storage space, space management activity, a little bit on the DBA part as well from the data control language statement, uh, statements and the space management activity so that mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we work on the uh, live sessions right the practicals it will be helpful to us because we basically we need to create some of the databases users uh, tables and then some procedures and everything so for that we need some access right by default we will not be having the privileges when we create the object or when we are trying to create the object. For that reason we will be looking into some DBA concepts as well from the space management and data control language statements. How basically we do that. And then we look into the uh, joint processing stuff. How the what are the different joint types and strategies of the military data and then uh, how basically they are internally performed. And then we come to the performance tuning part from the SQL side. What are the best practices which we need to follow in a Teradata environment? And what are some of the scenarios where we need to look into? What are the uh, basic standards we follow? Those things. And then uh, once that is done, then we will come to the collect statistics part where the performance of the plan can be improved because of that. And then we have the various transaction modes like uh, few uh, parameters are different from ANSI standard. Basically ANSI has some a number of standards, but Teradata 
when we are executing Teradata mode, right, few of the standards can be modified. So what are the basic differences between those two modes of transactions, those things. And then we will come to the Teradata utilities part the scripting, data scripting and then the fast load, multi load and the other utilities where we can do the bulk extract and uh, load operations. And then we come to the uh, advanced features of Teradata like a temporal, columnar, scalar, subquery, period data types, those things. And uh, once you are done with this uh, training, right, then you can uh, like uh, you can go for Teradata dual certification just current available in the market I'll be coding you the okay. modules as well yeah um, in the Teradata do you do the uh, raw data cleansing uh, in a like, staging area or uh, do you just store the data and cleansing you mean to say uh, whether we will be doing that in the Teradata environment or before loading itself? Yeah, we can do the Teradata cleansing in Teradata environment. Yes. Yes. So we extract the raw data from the systems and we can do cleansing and the Yes. It depends actually because uh, I have seen two cases. Uh, when I was working with Lloyd's environment, right, there the ETL was uh, data stage. So they were doing the data cleansing before the loading into the Teradata environment. Okay, and then when I came into test for environment, right, now here we are doing the data cleansing and other transformations on the Teradata platform. Here we are doing ELT. So it's not all. That means it's not an OLTP system. Is it a OLTP system then? Before cleansing means it's RDB. Hello? No, no, no. OLTP system is generally uh, the live data. Like OLAP is just a history system. Let's suppose if you take a banking example. So what are the live transactions which happen, right? The ATM transactions or the bank transactions, ATM withdrawal, then the bank deposit and online transactions, whatever happens, they get reset in the OLTP systems where the volume will be very low. Like they, they try to maintain only uh, like the first quarter or second quarter of data or maybe at most one year of data. But a data warehouse, the OLAP system, right? And these systems are called OLTP systems. Whatever the live data is reflected onto the system. OLAP is like a history repository. Like after one year, you need to remove the data from the OLTP system so that the new data, new data gets arrived into that system. And this old data needs to move into a history, into a warehouse, a history repository. So that's where the OLAP system should be and Teradata is for an OLAP. Yeah, it's an OLAP. And uh, respect to that data cleansing part, it's uh, uh, not nowhere anywhere uh, business standards are mentioned that we need to perform only ETL or ELT. It's up to the business and the tools which they use. So currently here in Tesco we use an ETL tool called, uh, not an ETL basically, it's uh, mostly uh, a collection of uh, data modeling, ETL and uh, reporting tool kind of a thing. So basically it uses the facilities and the features available in Teradata. So it prefers mostly ELT extract, load and then transform and uh, apart from the training module right like if you have any questions or any topics of your interest if you are working on any module with Teradata right and if it is not covered in that uh, module then you can let me know so once the regular training is done then I can discuss those topics with you.
this module has been just uh, generalized in a uh, fashion for just like two to three years of experienced persons. Yeah, can I know your, oh, oh, what is your role to this term in Tesco in your work area? In Tesco it's Oracle. Oh, okay. Oracle and DB2. Okay.